Hi, people of Reddit. I'm Whitney, 18, female, and my bully parents are finally getting justice for what they did. And I am happy about it. To give you a little backstory, let me tell you about my mom, Eleanor, 48, female, and dad, Max, 51, male. My parents are kind of bullies and they have always favoured my golden child sister, Elsa, 21, female. I've spent most of my life feeling like a second-class citizen in my own home. I'm not going to lie, it's been really tough and I've reached a point where I need to vent. So growing up, I was the one who could never do anything right. When I was 16, I decided to take up painting. It was a hobby I was really passionate about. I spent hours working on a piece for a local art competition. When I finally completed it, I was super proud and couldn't wait to show my parents. But instead of being supportive, my mom took one look at it and said, well, it's not exactly a masterpiece, is it? And proceeded to show it to Elsa who gave a half-hearted compliment and then went back to her homework. I felt crushed. My dad didn't even bother to look at it. He was too busy watching Elsa's new dance video. One of the worst instances was when I was 15 and had my first serious boyfriend. I was really excited about it and wanted to introduce him to my family. I was so nervous but I thought it would be a big step in feeling more connected with them. Instead, my mom and dad barely acknowledged him. They just made snide comments about how he didn't seem like the type of guy they'd expected me to date. My mom even went so far as to make a joke about how he seemed like he was from the wrong side of the tracks. I was mortified. They never made an effort to get to know him or make me feel supported in my own relationship. And then there was the time I had a really bad bout of the flu. I was bedridden for days, feeling absolutely miserable. My parents didn't even bother to check in on me. They were too busy with Elsa's rehearsal for the play. I remember laying in bed, hearing them discussing her costume and schedule and feeling completely abandoned. When Elsa came home, she just gave me a patronizing smile and said, I hope you're feeling better now, before heading off to hang out with her friends. The worst part is that Elsa never really appreciated me or valued me either. I tried to have conversations with her and share things about my life and it felt like she was always too busy or too disinterested. I only confided in her about how hurt I felt from all this favoritism and she just shrugged it off saying you're just being dramatic mom and dad love us both but it's like if they really did love us both why was I always treated as an afterthought I even tried to bond with her over shared interests like books and movies but she was always more interested in talking about herself or her friends for example She'd come home from a weekend trip with her friends and instead of asking me about my week or how I was doing, she'd just go on and on about her latest adventures and how amazing her friends were. It always felt like I was just a backdrop to her life, a mere spectator in her grand narrative. I could go on and on about the countless little instances where I felt neglected or undervalued. It's been a lifetime of living in Elsa's shadow, of feeling like the backup plan or the afterthought. And the hardest part is that my parents never see it. They think they're being fair, that they love us both equally. But it's so clear to me that their love for Elsa is just on a whole different level. Sometimes I wonder if it's something wrong with me, if I'm just not worthy of their attention and affection. But then I think about all the things I've done, all the ways I've tried to prove myself. And it's like, no matter how hard I try, it's never enough. I've even tried to talk to my parents about it, but they just dismiss me or tell me I'm being overly sensitive. They say things like, you're imagining things, or Elsa's achievements are just more visible 
but it doesn't make the sting any less painful. So two days ago was my 18th birthday. For context, Elsa and my birthday are just one day apart. So you can imagine how our family celebrations typically go. Growing up, I've always had this sinking feeling that my birthday was just overshadowed by Elsa's. But this year, I decided to keep things simple. I knew better than to expect a big celebration at this point. I pretty much stopped dreaming about anything extravagant. So I told my parents that all I wanted was a quiet dinner at a nice restaurant with just a few of my friends and family. Honestly, I figured it was a modest request to give everything. I was really excited about this birthday. Turning 18 felt like a huge milestone. I mean, it's the age where you finally get to say, I'm legally an adult and all that. I was looking forward to it as a way to celebrate a bit of independence and mark the end of my teenage years. I had picked out this gorgeous dress that I had been eyeing for months. It was this sleek navy blue number with a bit of sparkle that made me feel like I was finally stepping into my own. I even went out of my way to find a restaurant that I thought everyone would enjoy. After doing some research, I settled on a place that had great views and a cozy atmosphere. I thought it would be perfect for a low-key birthday dinner. I went to the trouble of searching for the best restaurant, making sure it was somewhere everyone could agree on. I didn't want any last-minute stress or arguments over where to eat. I wanted the night to be as smooth and enjoyable as possible, so I found this cute little bistro that served a variety of dishes and had a good mix of vegetarian and non-vegetarian options. I even called ahead to make sure they had a table for us just to be on the safe side. When I finally had everything planned out, I was really looking forward to the evening. I felt like I had done everything right and that this was going to be a special moment. I let my mom know about the restaurant and the time I thought would work best. I said I'd like to start the dinner around 7 p.m. and she agreed. She even said she'd make sure everyone would be there on time. I was so relieved that at least one part of this whole process seemed to be coming together smoothly. In the days leading up to my birthday, I was buzzing with excitement. I got everything ready, the dress, the shoes, and even a little bit of makeup. I wanted to feel good and look my best for the occasion. I was hoping that this year, despite the usual overshadowing, I could actually enjoy my birthday for once. It was a small personal celebration, but exactly what I wanted. No big parties, no extravagant decorations, just a nice intimate dinner with people I care about. I thought this would be a chance for my family to show a little appreciation for me too. It felt like a reasonable expectation given how little I had asked for. I reached the restaurant at 6.45 and waited outside for 15 minutes because I didn't want to go in early and seem too eager. I figured I'd be polite to give everyone a little leeway to arrive, especially since it was my special day. I wanted to make sure Everything was perfect, so I decided to stick to the plan and wait until 7 p.m. before going in. When I finally walked inside at 7, hoping to see everyone gathered and ready to celebrate, it was like walking into an empty theater. I was the only one there. The reservation was still on the books, so that was a relief. But the hostess gave me a look of surprise when she saw me standing alone. She kindly led me to my table, which of course was beautifully set and ready, but it felt more like a stage for a solo performance than a cozy dinner with friends and family. The waiter came over almost immediately and asked if I'd like to order something while I waited. I was feeling a bit awkward and didn't want to start eating or drinking alone, so I told him no, that I prefer to wait for the rest of my party. He seemed understanding, though I could tell he was a little puzzled by the fact that no one else had arrived. I hoped it was just a matter of a few minutes delay, 
maybe some last minute traffic or people running late. As I sat there, I tried to stay optimistic. I checked my phone a couple of times to see if I had missed any messages. Maybe someone was stuck in traffic or there was a mix up with the timing. I kept looking towards the entrance, hoping to see familiar faces walk through the door. The restaurant was starting to fill up with other patrons and I felt increasingly self-conscious sitting there alone wearing my special dress with no one to share it with. The minutes dragged on and I was beginning to feel a knot in my stomach. My excitement from earlier in the day was starting to give way to a mix of anxiety and disappointment. I tried to keep my mind off it by scrolling through my phone or fiddling with my menu but the reality was starting to sink in. It was past 7.15 and still no sign of anyone. At that point, I began to worry. I didn't want to make a scene or call anyone out, but I couldn't shake the feeling that something was seriously off. I tried to convince myself that maybe everyone was just running exceptionally late, but the minutes kept ticking by with no change. My hopes were dwindling and I was feeling more and more isolated. By 7.30, I couldn't deny it any longer. It was clear that my family and friends hadn't shown up yet. I started to get a bit emotional sitting there at my table, feeling like I was the only one who had shown up to their own birthday party. I began to think back on how I had made sure everything was arranged and planned, how I had been excited and looking forward to this night only to end up waiting alone. I kept telling myself to stay calm and composed, but it was getting harder with each passing minute. When no one showed up after 30 minutes, I started to get really anxious. I decided to call my parents thinking maybe they were just running late. I called them repeatedly, but no one answered. My heart was racing and I felt this sinking feeling in my stomach. I knew I needed to figure out what was going on, so I decided to call Elsa, hoping she might have some answers. She picked up on the second ring, and I tried to keep my voice calm, even though I was on the verge of panic. I asked her where everyone was, and she casually mentioned that she was at home. I was completely baffled. I asked her when she was planning to come to the restaurant, and that's when she dropped the bombshell. She said, Oh, I forgot to tell you but we had to cancel the party. Mom wasn't feeling well. I was in disbelief. I asked her why no one had told me about the cancellation. I thought maybe there was some sort of miscommunication or a mix up. Elsa's response was shockingly nonchalant. She said, I'm sorry, I guess I forgot to let you know. It felt like a punch to the gut. Here I was dressed up, waiting at the restaurant and they hadn't even bothered to give me a heads up. I tried to process what she was saying. I asked her if there was any chance they could still make it if mom was okay or if there was some way to salvage the evening. But Elsa's response was cold and dismissive. She said, I really have to go now. And then she just hung up on me. I was left sitting there, stunned and hurt. I tried to keep my composure, but it was really tough. I felt like I had put so much effort into planning this evening and had gotten nothing in return. I looked around the restaurant trying to keep my tears at bay. I could see families and groups of friends enjoying their meals. It made me feel even more isolated. I was sitting there with no one to talk to, no one to celebrate with. The emptiness of the situation was overwhelming. I was sitting there feeling pretty miserable, so I decided to order something to eat. I told the waiter that no one was coming and asked if I could move to a smaller table. At this point, I was just trying to make the best of a bad situation. I ordered a simple meal, not really caring much about what I ate, and pulled out my phone to pass the time. As I was scrolling through my feed, trying to distract myself from the growing sadness, I noticed someone walking through the restaurant's entrance. I looked up and to my shock, it was my grandfather. I hadn't expected him to come, especially since I thought my mom had uninvited everyone. I was genuinely surprised and honestly relieved to see a familiar face. 
he walked over with a warm smile and said, Happy birthday. I felt a rush of emotion as he came closer. I stood up and gave him a big hug. It was one of those hugs that you need when everything else feels like it's falling apart. I thanked him for coming and it felt like a small glimmer of hope in an otherwise bleak evening. He looked around and asked me where everyone else was. Up until that moment, I had been holding back tears, trying to keep it together. But when he asked that simple question, it was like a dam breaking open. I couldn't hold it in any longer. I started crying right there in the middle of the restaurant. My face flushed and I could feel the tears streaming down. I took a deep breath and tried to explain what had happened. Between sobs, I told him about how I had arrived early, how no one had shown up, and how Elsa had called to tell me that the party was cancelled because mom wasn't feeling well. I told him how I had been sitting there alone, feeling completely abandoned and forgotten on what was supposed to be my special day. My grandfather listened patiently and I could see concern in his eyes. He put a comforting hand on my shoulder and told me he was so sorry. He said he didn't know about the cancellation and that he had come as soon as he could. It was clear he felt bad about the situation and his presence was a much needed comfort. We chatted as we waited for my food to arrive. He shared some stories from his day and made a few jokes to lift my spirits. It wasn't the lively birthday dinner I had imagined, but his company made it feel a bit more like a celebration. As we talked, I felt a sense of relief. Even though my family had let me down, at least I wasn't completely alone. When the food finally arrived, it was hard to fully enjoy it. The earlier events had left me a bitter taste and I found myself picking up my plate more out of habit than hunger. My grandfather, ever the trooper, made sure to keep the conversation light and engaging. He kept me company and made the best of the situation. My grandfather drove me home and I was still feeling pretty raw from the evening. When we arrived, I just wanted to crawl into my room and shut out the world. I didn't say anything to my parents. I just went straight to my room and closed the door behind me. I was hoping for some peace and quiet after the emotional roller coaster of the night. A few minutes later, though, I was jolted from my thoughts by the sounds of screaming coming from the living room. I was a bit startled and worried, so I decided to go downstairs to see what was going on. As I made my way down the stairs, the shouting got louder and more intense, and when I reached the bottom, I saw my grandfather and my mom in a heated argument. My mom was yelling, asking my grandfather how he could do this to them. Her voice was full of anger and disbelief. I was completely confused. I had no idea what they were fighting about. I stood there trying to make sense of the situation and it was clear that this was more than just a simple family squabble. From what I could gather, the argument was about something that had to do with my grandfather's will. Apparently, my grandfather had promised my mom that he would leave her his house in his will, but now he had decided to change his mind. My grandfather was furious, saying that my mom was still the same entitled brat she had been when she lived with him. He was clearly upset and ashamed of how she had treated me, his own granddaughter. In the middle of the shouting match, my grandfather turned to me, took a deep breath and said, Happy birthday, sweetie, and then headed for the door. It was a strange moment, filled with mixed emotions. I felt a bit of comfort from his kind words, but the chaos that had unfolded was overwhelming. He left without another word, and I was left standing there trying to process everything. Once he was gone, my mom turned to me with an intense look. She demanded to know what I had told him. I was caught off guard by the question, but I tried to stay calm. I simply said, nothing, just the truth. It was the truth, after all, about how I had been left alone on my birthday and how Elsa had casually mentioned that the party was cancelled without informing me properly. My mom's face contorted with anger, but before she could say anything else, I just turned and walked back to my room.
I closed the door behind me and leaned against it, feeling a mix of exhaustion and frustration. I had hoped for a quiet end to a difficult day, but it seemed like the night was far from over. Eventually, I lay down on my bed trying to calm my racing thoughts. I felt emotionally drained and wished I could just fast forward through the rest of the night. The arguing had left me feeling even more isolated, and I couldn't shake the sense that I was caught in the middle of something much larger than myself. The evening had not gone at all as I had planned, and I was left wondering if things would ever change, or if this was just how things would always be. As I closed my eyes, I hoped for some semblance of peace and a better start to the next day. When I woke up the next day, I felt like I was in a completely different world. The entire atmosphere in the house was icy and uncomfortable. My family was treating me with this cold distance that made me feel like I was invisible. It was a stark contrast to the usual chaos and warmth of family interactions. I walked downstairs and immediately noticed that things were already set up for Elsa's birthday. It was like a complete switch had been flipped overnight. My mom was bustling around the kitchen, clearly feeling better, and she was cooking up a storm. The house was filled with the smells of what I could only guess were preparations for a big birthday celebration. I felt a pang of sadness and frustration as I realized how different things were from the night before. I tried to keep my emotions in check, but it was really hard to see the celebration for Elsa being planned so meticulously while my own birthday had been so disregarded. I was still feeling the sting of being abandoned and hurt by the lack of consideration from my family. I couldn't just sit there and watch them prepare for Elsa's party when it felt like they had completely ignored my feelings and my birthday. So I decided to leave. I packed a few things and went over to my best friend's house for the night. I needed a break from the tension and the cold atmosphere at home. I needed somewhere to go where I felt welcomed and understood. My best friend's place was a sanctuary where I knew I could at least feel a little bit of normalcy and comfort. It was an impromptu decision, but it felt like the right one at that moment. The weird part was that even after I left, my mom didn't even bother to call me. There was no text, no call asking me to come back for Elsa's birthday. It was like my absence didn't matter to them at all. That was a huge blow to my already bruised feelings. It made me wonder if they really didn't want me there or if they just didn't care enough to make an effort to reach out. So now I'm sitting here at my best friend's house, writing this post, trying to make sense of everything that's happened. I'm feeling a mix of anger and sadness. That's been hard to shake off. It's frustrating to feel so disregarded by the people who are supposed to be closest to me. I'm trying to figure out how to deal with these emotions and how to move forward. I'm reaching out because I need advice. How do I cope with feeling this way? How do I stop being so angry and sad about what's happened? I want to find a way to heal from this and not let it consume me. Any advice or words of encouragement would really mean a lot right now. Thanks for listening to my story. Update one. Hi everyone, I've got quite the update for you. I've been kicked out of my house. Yeah, it sounds as dramatic as it feels. It's only a few weeks until I'm supposed to head off to college, but apparently my parents couldn't wait that long. The craziest part, it all started over me not doing the dishes. So here's how it went down. I hadn't gotten around to doing the dishes one night and my mom completely lost it. She started railing at me about how ungrateful and entitled I am, how I never help around the house and all that jazz. It felt like she was blowing it way out of proportion. I tried to explain that I had been really busy with preparations for college and it was just one night, but instead of calming down, she just got angrier. Well, I lost my patience too. I snapped back and told her exactly how I felt about the way they've treated me over the years, how I've always been the one overlooked, how my birthday 
was just another example of their disregard. I aired out everything I'd been bottling up for years, and once it was out, I couldn't hold back. I told her about the emotional distance, the favoritism towards Elsa, and how hurt I felt about everything. As you can imagine, that didn't go over well. Things got really heated and my mom's face turned bright red and she screamed at me to get out. I was stunned but not surprised. I'd seen this coming for a while now, though I didn't expect it to be triggered by something as mundane as the dishes. I didn't wait around for any more drama. I grabbed a bag, threw in a few essentials and just left. I didn't even bother with a big goodbye or explanation. I was too upset and needed to get out of there before things got even worse. I told my mom I'd come back for my stuff when I was heading to college, but for now, I needed to be somewhere else. I went straight to my best friend's house. I called her up on the way, hoping she wouldn't mind me crashing there for a bit. Luckily, she was totally understanding and told me I could stay as long as I needed. Her place has been a haven for me ever since. I don't know what to do now. Update two. Hi everyone, I know it's only been a few weeks since my last update, but I figured I should let you all know what's been happening. Honestly, things have been pretty quiet on my end, but there's a bit of news that might interest you. So yesterday, I finally got a chance to talk to my grandfather. After the whole drama of being kicked out and everything, I felt like I needed to let him in on what was going on. I called him up and filled him in on the whole messy situation. How I got kicked out over not doing the dishes, the fight with my mom and the fallout with my family. His reaction was intense to say the least. He was absolutely furious when he heard what had happened. He couldn't believe that things had escalated to that point over something as trivial as dishes. But more than that, he was upset that I hadn't reached out to him sooner. He said he would have been more than willing to help me out if I had called him earlier. It was a mix of relief and frustration hearing that. Relief because he was willing to help, but frustration at the timing of everything. We ended up having a pretty long conversation about what had happened and how I was feeling. It was really comforting to have someone who understood my side of the story and who was willing to step up and support me. He reassured me that he was on my side and that I shouldn't feel like I had to go through this alone. It felt good to know that there was at least one person in my family who was genuinely supportive. My grandfather has decided to come over the day after tomorrow to help me get my stuff from my parents' house. It's a huge relief to know that I won't have to deal with this by myself. He's going to help me pack up everything I need for college and get it all sorted out. I'm honestly a bit nervous about going back to the house and facing my parents again, but having my grandfather there makes me feel a lot more confident. Update 3 Hi everyone, so I've got another update for you and, and unfortunately it's a pretty rough one. Yesterday was supposed to be the day when I finally got my stuff from my parents' house with the help of my grandfather. However, things took a really terrible turn. When we arrived at my parents' house, I was shocked to find that almost all of my belongings were gone. It turned out that they had either thrown away or donated pretty much everything. All that was left were a few old notebooks. I couldn't believe my eyes. It felt like a total violation of my personal space and belongings. I was at a loss for words. Naturally, I confronted my parents about it. I asked them what had happened to my stuff and if they knew where it all went. Their reaction was to laugh at me. They actually laughed. It was like they found my distress amusing. I was stunned and heartbroken. It was like a final slap in my face and I, I couldn't hold back my tears. My grandfather was absolutely furious when he saw how they treated me. His face was red with anger and I could tell he wanted to confront them more aggressively, but he kept his cool. Cool. 
Instead of getting into a big argument, he decided it was best to just leave. It wasn't worth escalating the situation further, especially since I was already in such a fragile state. We got back into the car and that's when the tears really started to flow. I was crying pretty hard, feeling utterly defeated and emotionally drained. My grandfather, being the incredible support that he is, did his best to comfort me. He told me he was so sorry that things had turned out this way and that he wished he could have done more. He reassured me that I wasn't alone and that we would figure this out together. To lift my spirits and make sure I had what I needed for college, my grandfather took me shopping. It was a bit surreal walking through stores, picking out things I needed for the next chapter of my life while still feeling the sting of what had happened. But his kindness and determination to help me get back on my feet really meant a lot. We managed to pick up a few essentials and it was a relief to know that I had the basics covered. On top of that, my best friend told me I could have whatever I wanted from her stuff. She offered me clothes, supplies and anything else I might need. It was a huge comfort to know that even though I was going through such a tough time, I had people who genuinely cared and wanted to support me. Stay tuned for more stories from Argo Relationships.